Every week, fans go to dogandthimble.com and vote for one of the games we're going to review the following week. And the winner this time was Among the Stars, which makes me happy because I love talking about Among the Stars. Intergalactic peace has been reached. That is great news, right? Aliens are no longer fighting aliens. Humans are hooking up with green skin chicks. Everybody's getting along. And that means it's time to start building some space stations so that all the aliens can mingle together and have some fun and do negotiations. Now just because there's peace doesn't mean that your alien race doesn't have pride, right? You wanna build the coolest, best, most profitable space station. And that is your goal. You are trying to build a better space station than everybody else, all in the name of intergalactic relations. Now one caveat before I jump into this review is that I do review this game with the Ambassadors expansion. This is one of the expansions available for Among the Stars, and in my opinion, it is crucial to making the game play better. With this, it adds just one little extra layer to the game that adds just enough depth to make Among the Stars rise towards the cream of the crop. Among the Stars is a city building game. Well, okay, you're building a space station, but you get the idea. You're going to be laying down cards to create a sprawling station. Notice how there are different colored borders for each card. That shows its type. Blue is administration, yellow is business, red is military, purple is recreation, green is diplomatic. This is how many coins it costs to place the card. This is how many victory points it's worth immediately. If you see a cube icon like this, it means this card requires energy to place. Energy comes from power reactors, but that energy can only travel two spaces away from the reactor. So plan your base wisely. This is where you get bonus scoring, depending largely on how your base is set up. Here is the only tricky part. If this box is white, you read the scoring rules and they happen immediately. If it's yellow, you do nothing yet. The bonus is scored at the end of the game. If you place a racetrack, for example, you're going to want to build a 4x4 grid of locations around it to earn these three extra victory points at game's end. Everyone starts with a randomly selected alien race. Each race has some sort of special ability, useful but never particularly powerful. The game is divided into four years, with six rounds each year. Among the Stars is a drafting game. It's one of the best things about it and adds an important layer of strategy to your play. At the start of each year, every player draws six location cards. You choose one and place it face down in front of you. Then you pass your stack to the left. Whatever you pass on goes to the next player. So if your pal is building up a military compound, you may not want to send him an advantageous red card. Once everyone's selected a card, they reveal. You can do one of four actions on your turn. Pay the cost on the location card and add it to your station. Discard the card and receive three coins. Discard a card to collect a power grid, which comes with two energy cubes. And lastly, if you play with the Ambassadors expansion, which I highly recommend, you can discard a card and pay the cost for an Ambassador. Ambassadors require you to build an Embassy Bureau for them, and each comes with some sort of special power. The game continues until the fourth year is finished. Then it's time to count up all the delayed bonuses from the yellow highlights on location cards. The most victory points has the coolest space station and wins. Now, Among the Stars is certainly not the first city building game that's ever come along, and a lot of people would argue that Suburbia is better than Among the Stars. I would not be one of them. And I think these games are pretty comparable, but the difference is that Suburbia is building an actual city where you're building lakes and you know, you've got schools for kids and all that kind of stuff. And for me, I just think thematically, just the idea of having a space station with a sci-fi theme to it instantly makes it more interesting, right? Uh, a NASCAR racetrack on Earth? Boring, but a space NASCAR racetrack? That's exciting, right? And so that's what I think one of the things that Among Us Star has going for it is just the theme. If you like sci-fi stuff and city building, then you've got it all right here. And I think the fact that you have an alien race that actually has a special ability to it and those are randomly decided each game adds another little wrinkle to your strategy. But what really sells Among the Stars for me is the fact that it has a drafting mechanic. I don't think there are enough 
game that utilize drafting mechanics. I think they are fantastic. Just think about it. Every year in this game, you know that you're gonna get six cards, but you also know that you're gonna be passing those cards to your competitors. So you've not only gonna worry, what am I gonna pick and place, but you've also gotta think, am I leaving something that is gonna help the person across from me, or even the person next to him, or the person next to him? And then also, is there something that I could maybe not pick now from the first six cards and hope that nobody else picks it so it comes back to me later? There's kind of a lot that goes on into it, and I think that makes it really interesting. Now, I definitely recommend, if you're gonna get Among the Stars, to pick up the Ambassadors expansion. And the reason for that is that the Ambassadors add one extra thing that you get to do on a turn, one other option. If you think about it, without the Ambassadors expansion, there's only three things you can do on any given turn, right? You can discard a card to get a power plant, which you wanna get when it's necessary, but they don't do a lot for you. You want to, you know, obviously play a card if you can and pay for it to add something to your station, or you can discard a card just to get money. But having the option where you can say, okay, none of these cards in my hand really do anything for me, which happens a lot of times towards the very end of a year, right? You only get one or two cards to choose from, and neither of them might be advantageous. You might say, look, I'm, I'm flush with money. I don't care about money. I don't need a power plan. Uh, without the Ambassador's expansion, you're stuck. That's, that's all you can do. But having the Ambassador expansion means that there, there's always somebody out there that you can purchase that is going to give you some sort of advantage in the game. I think that's great. And they come with a bureau, right? Adding a bureau to your station means that you're adding, if you're trying to get the most red cards, right, the most military areas, you can add the military bureau onto your base. And not only are you getting the ambassador, but you're also getting that to count as one of those red squares in your space station. Uh, I really enjoy Among the Stars, but I do say that if you're gonna get it, highly recommend that you also get the Ambassador's expansion with it. It will make the game that much better. So that's Among the Stars. I wanna thank you for watching. I hope you're really enjoying our reviews on Dog and Thimble. And if you are and you haven't subscribed yet, could you please click the link above me and subscribe. The more subscribers we have, the more different types of video content we will do. We wanna start doing Let's Play videos, but we wanna get those subscriber numbers up. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do now because we want to make even more, better, cooler videos for you. Thanks for watching. We'll be back soon enough with another review.